Now let's make this more interesting. I'm going to add a random delay to each website. I want each website to respond at a different time. With this, you can see that we're displaying these codes as we get them. So let's go to our long task class. I want to overwrite the simulate method. And in the second version, I want to introduce a parameter called delay. So instead of three seconds, we're going to use this argument. Now we go to our flight service class. We're going to reuse our random object to pass a random delay to the simulate method. So let's say we want each website to respond between one to three seconds. We have a baseline of one second plus random that next int two second. Now let's run a program and see what happens. So we're querying this concurrently and we're getting responses in different times. Beautiful. Now the last part, we want to print a final message to say how long it took to query all these websites. That is pretty easy. So we go to our demo class. After we get the quotes, we collect them in a list. Let's store the result over here. This is going to give us a list of future objects. Let me show you. So list of completable future of void. Now we can use the all of method to wait for the completion of all these future objects. So completable future dot all of. Now here we have a var args parameter. Technically, this is a syntactic sugar over arrays. So we can pass an array of completable future objects. That is pretty easy. We call futures dot two array. Now this method is overloaded. The version without parameters returns an object array. Let me show you. I'm going to put this on a new line. Take a look. So the version without a parameter returns an object array. We don't want this because the all of method expects an array of completable future objects. Okay. So we should use the second version. And here we should pass an array of completable futures. With this, we'll get a completable future array. So over here, we pass new completable future of zero. So we pass an empty array. And with this, we're telling this method that we want the result to be a completable future array. Okay. Now we wait for all the result. Let me put this on a new line. Pay attention to how I'm formatting this code. So we have completable future. We wait for all these futures to complete. Then we're going to run this piece of code. This is where we're going to print our final message. First, we need to calculate how long it took to execute this operation. So just before we start, we're going to get the current time. We can use the local time class. This class has a static method called now. So this returns the current time. Now, over here, we're going to repeat this. So we calculate the end time, local time dot now. Then we create a duration object. So this duration class has a static method called between. We can pass the start and end time and get a duration object. And finally, we print a message like retrieve all quotes in. Here we call duration dot two millis. This will return the duration in milliseconds. And finally, we add msec. Okay. Let's run the program and see the result. There you go. Beautiful. So that brings us to the end of this course. I want to say thank you for allowing me to be your instructor. If you enjoyed this course, please support me by telling others about my coding school. I really appreciate your support. Once again, thank you. And I hope to see you again in my other courses. Thank you and have a fantastic day.